few questions recently about how I make my slip and it's really easy uh, but I'll just go through the process quickly. So um, I make my slip from leftover clay of the clays that I throw with. So I've got two uh, PF580 is my light clay and anthracite is my dark clay and I just collect all the trimmings and put them in a bucket and then when the bucket's full I add water to it and let it sit for a while. So trimmings are great because they're really thin, dry quickly and you don't want big lumps of clay in there because as the clay rehydrates it becomes essentially waterproof again um, and a big lump of clay the water will take forever to get to the inside of where fine completely dry clay like this will slate down very very quickly. So you kind of if you if possible you want to collect the trimmings while they're still freshly trimmed so they're kind of leather hard so you don't kick up any dust but um, you want to let them dry to the point of pretty dry if not completely bone dry um, and then if you can let them slake for a day or two or even longer so what I tend to do is I'll fill a bucket up uh, then I'll add water and just set it aside and then when I need some slip I've got a couple of buckets standing by that are already completely rehydrated um, so I'll pour the water in and then jump to a different bucket and show you what I'll do next. But it will shrink down as you add the water because um, you're filling in the air gaps. So a lot of this is just air. And you can basically put as much water, actually wasn't quite enough. But the levels drop down and will continue to drop as it bubbles. But I'd expect the bucket to be pretty full. Um, probably it's just about enough. And a nice thing with making slip is that the water will separate out over a bit of time. So you can make, if you've got the time and you don't need it to work immediately, you can make it too runny and then take the water back, which means it's easier to pass through a sieve and easier to just work with generally. A thick slip will coat everything and won't go through anything easily. So, set that aside, put a lid on it, um, come back to it in a day or a week or whatever. Right, so this is the next part of the process. Um, I've got a black slip made of the same slip coloured with oxides, my sieved slip and then the tub of slip that's been slaking but it's not yet sieved. So the, the way I do this is I've got a third of a tub of black slip, probably not even a third of a tub of sieved slip, and then that's two thirds full. And an easy way to maintain all these slips is essentially you move that slip into there because it's ready to go uh, and then cut it and then that slip through a sieve into there. So then you'd have sieved slip with colorant, sieved slip from that, and then this bucket can go back over to the side and I'll start filling it out with trimmings again. So the first thing to do is I've got to mix that one up and pour it into here and wet. So that'll do. This slip's actually a bit runnier than I'd like, which is ideal for this because we're going to add some colorant to it. So I add my colorant as a uh, percentage of the wet weight, so um, of the slip in this form rather than of the dry ingredients, which some people will do if they're mixing their slip up from dry ingredients. But um, obviously for this process it's more convenient to do it that way. Um, and I colour my slip with basically 1% red iron oxide, manganese dioxide, chromium oxide and cobalt oxide. Um, either cobalt will work but cobalt oxide is a bit more potent per gram and a similar price um, and not so good in phases because it tends to, uh, it's a slightly larger particle size and will speckle more. So cobalt carbonate in glazes but cobalt oxide is fine in slip. Um, and the reason I say approximately is because I've been dropping down the amount of cobalt and chrome I put in um, and increasing the amount of iron. So it's probably more like a, a percentage and a half to 2% iron 
and half a percent of both of those and you won't really notice it. Some people mix up slips with much more colourant in them. Um, I found that gives you obviously a much stronger black of a small amount will colour it very well. Uh, the flip side is obviously it costs a lot more and a lot more glazes won't like it and will start to bubble. This is just enough for black without going too much further. So a good amount is to add a kilo or two. So I'm going to go a kilo and a half will do. And you don't need to be that uh, that precise with it. You just need to know how much you added. So kilo and a half. I will set that aside and add colorants to it in a minute. Um, actually, I might do that now because then they can sit and absorb. So switch to more precise scales and get a mask. Right, so colorants in that, which I will let sit for a little while while we do the rest of this. So they soak in a little bit. And then what I want to do is get the unsift one and see what sort of state it's in. Could do with a bit more water. Um, and as you can see, it's quite thick and gloopy. Um, and what I will do uh, is do a bit of immersion blending. Now, obviously, immersion blenders do not particularly like this, but um, they are quite good at it. have got a 60 mesh sieve and just standard IKEA kitchen brush and then my cheap immersion blender and I'll let this chomp through the slip so again I'll just fast forward this bit because it's going to be very noisy from your point of view ideally I'd run that for a bit longer but they really don't like it if you run them too long so I'll let it have a little break I want to use it again in a minute to do the black slip, which you should find easier because that's already been sieved. Um, and then what we do is try not to splash too much into the sieve and pass it through. I've done a video in which I stick this on the wheel um, and don't bother moving myself, just let the wheel turn it. And it is very effective, but this way is actually faster. Because the slip stays in the middle better. When it's spinning, it wants to all climb up the wall, and it actually becomes, you spend more time getting it down than passing it through. I think pretty much any size of sieve will work for this and the higher obviously the smaller the, the chunks will be if any pass through but then it will be harder to get through so I, I think 60 is fine I think 40 would probably be fine for this uh, all you're looking to do is make sure there aren't big lumps By the time you get down to a 40 mesh sieve, that is um, tiny enough that it's not going to cause you any trouble. <laughs> One thing to make sure as it gets to this sort of stage is that um, it's not, a sieve isn't sitting on a mountain of its own slip. So the reason it wasn't going through particularly well there, or was in no way helped by the fact that there was slip underneath the sieve as well as trying to go through it. Oh, and obviously I could keep going with that, but you can sort of see at this point that 
slip is getting a little difficult to work with. So what I would do is just mix it up a bit, add more water, and let this continue to slake down uh, and add more trimmings to it after a little while. It's not worth trying to get one completely clean if you don't have to because that first bit, the mass of it's quite easy to deal with and it gets progressively more awkward the more complete you try and be where if you keep um, moving buckets through it's not so bad if that makes any sense so I don't need this now um, but I will be working with the black slip so I will finish that and then I'm going to try some um, drippy slip pieces with almost entirely black and then a little flash of the green and the blue slip, the bright versions of them, um, to be the Northern Lights is the plan. All right, so again, this is mostly cooled back down, so I can use it for a minute or two without it complaining too much. But it's a great way of dispersing things through and breaking up any lumps of particularly the chrome in my case uh, doesn't like mixing in and so rather than sieving the whole thing again if I could just puree it with this um, it does a surprisingly good job of well I say surprisingly good it's not that surprising it's a blade spinning at 18,000 rpm so it breaks things up quite well and that's it that's all I would do um, the immersion blender is great for um, the smaller containers, which you've probably seen me use in other videos, these little 400mm um, beakers from Wilco's in the UK, if you can find them or something similar in your country, they are great because the immersion blender fits inside um, and it's the perfect shape for it to fully mix in uh, the colourants. So I use them for all my smaller mixes. Um, as for other colours, obviously that's how I get my black. Some of my blues are using cobalt. Um, I just did one of the rainbow ones with neodymium, uh, which means it changes color under different lights. But generally speaking, that's pretty much the only one, only things that are color with oxides. Um, iron, if you want a brown, iron or manganese are fine for that. But um, for most other things, I just use stains because it's, it seems, from my experience at least, that it's quite easy to get a whole range of colours with oxides and glaze, but in, in slip, they either work or they don't, and you kind of seem to be more limited, whereas stains, because it's a, a pre-made, pre-fired, scented mix, um, or fritted rather, fritted mix, it keeps a specific colour much better. So, for example, my light blue is done with light blue stain. It's a very cheap stain. I'd imagine it's just cobalt and maybe zircon or something like that to keep the cost down. Um, if you put cobalt in to get a blue, you'll get more of a cobalt blue than this sky blue. Um, and rather than trying to work out how I can get this colour with cobalt, I just use stain. Um, the reds and yellows that I've been working with recently, they're stains. Uh, so if in doubt, stains, mason stains are always a good bet. Um, wherever possible I get mine from Pottery Craft in the UK because I like Pottery Craft and um, I order everything else from them where possible and they don't do mason stains. So if I want mason stains, I've ordered them from somewhere else. Um, but for the most part, Pottery Craft are fine. But if you're in a different country, look out for Mason or try ones from whoever you get your normal supplies from. Because as a general rule, if a stain works, the stain works. So they're all doing similar things. Um, some colours will be easier to make with stains than others. So some may work, some may not. And some you may not have the option of. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, just start with 5% of the stain compared to wet weight. So, for example, I just tested, um, I got some different colours of red 
and I did some very quick tests, but you can see here 5% and 2.5%. Where's focus? Let's see if I can find it. Actually, no, it must be somewhere around here. Anyway, so I've got orange, red, and yellow at 5%, you get decent colour. Uh, at 2.5%, you're getting it more pastel. You can go as high as 10 or 20 or whatever you want, but as a general rule, 5% is pretty good for most things. And a cost effective starting point once you start putting 10% stain in something, uh, it gets a bit pricey. Not so bad if you're using it for kind of drippy slip things, but uh, yeah, you don't want to be throwing too much of it away. Um, and that's it really. I mean, it's, slip is incredibly easy to make. You can make it more complicated by deflocculating, which means you add something like sodium silicate or Darvan, and it means the clay particles uh, don't repel. Yeah, don't repel each other as well. Um, it just changes the charges of everything within it, so you can get away with more clay, less water, uh, so it's close, closer to thrown clay, so it's what you'd use if you were slip casting, so there's not so much water to deal with, and you can do that if you want to do drippy slippy things, you can have a thick clay that's got barely any water in it. Uh, I don't bother because this is fine, but in a lot of ways the process would work better if I did add sodium silicate. It's just then you start, uh, you're in a kind of balancing act. There's another variable. It's not just clay and water, it's clay, water, and deflocculant, and you can ruin it by putting too much in. And if you have different amounts in two different slips and you combine them, they don't play very well together. So just not worth it in my opinion for what I use it for, but obviously for some processes it's essential. Um, yeah, it's just, Trimmings with water added, basically.